guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Heather McCarthy. And in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing a little change to our Christmas homeschool plans. So if you've been around, you've seen this video that I'll link up here that was basically our very simple homeschool Christmas plans. Just doing the daily Grace Co. Advent and letting that be pretty much the extent of our Christmas homeschool. So that's been our plan since Thanksgiving. That is what we have been doing. Um, it is now when I'm filming this, the 7th of December. So we're about a week into December and my plans are changing. We are doing our Advent every night. We've been doing really well at that. We did start it a little bit early because we are going to my parents' house and it just wasn't something that I wanted to do there or really felt comfortable doing there. So we started early so we can take three days off when we're at my parents' house. But last night I was talking to Madison and I asked her like, do you want to learn more about Christmas? Do you want to learn more about, you know, the reason for the holiday? And she said yes. Mind blown. So I had not planned on doing a mini unit. Well, let's clarify. Originally, in the beginning of the school year, I had totally planned on doing this mini unit. Rolled through the year, struggled, bust through the whole first semester so far. Did not plan on doing this mini unit. We failed at doing the veterinarian unit. We failed at the Thanksgiving unit. So why would I print out the Christmas unit? Well, she wants to do it. So I printed it out last night. I have her copy and my copy and I just wanted to kind of give you guys some tips and tricks. I'm not going to do a flip through of these because I pretty much if you didn't start this by today you're not going to get done for Christmas. Sorry. But um, I've had a lot of people ask me how I use these mini units with a toddler. So my daughter is three years old if you are new here. She is young, she is doing preschool work. So we did print out the early learner workbook for her. And I will say I don't force her to do these activities and I don't force her to do them correctly. We'll work on them, but I'm not gonna be like, no, that's not right, do it again. Um, so today she had to color the sheep. She was supposed to trace the sheep and do a numbers thing, a connect the, connect the dots. Which by the way, that is the tiniest connect the dot I've ever seen because I can't even read the numbers. But instead of forcing her to do that while I read, because it's just me and her, um, it's too hard for me to sit there and make sure she's actually doing it correctly while also reading the lesson. So I just kind of let her color on these. She colored in all the sheep. She did trace the one that needed to be traced in pink um, and she did the maze on the next page. page. But basically how I use this with her is these is like, these sheets are like busy work unless they're actual activities. Um, which this one does seem like it's gonna be mostly busy work type of stuff to keep her hands moving while we are talking. And this seems like what a lot of these activities will be. So that's kind of how I use the early learner book with her is just use it as, you know, keep the hands moving so that she's listening to me read. All right, everyone asks how I use these. I sit down. We're, we have started doing this during the day. That is the one thing that I will say we changed this mini unit because we failed it so many recently. I was just like, what is going on? Like, what are we doing wrong? Why isn't this working? And really, it came down to we're trying to do it at night so my husband can be involved. We're trying to do it after dinner so my husband can be involved. But I know my daughter's best time of day to do schoolwork is in the morning. So waiting till nighttime to do this because it's encouraged she's done with fathers. Waiting until nighttime to do this really isn't working for us because she's exhausted. She's not in the mood. He just got home from work. He's not really in the mood. I just made dinner and cleaned the kitchen. I'm not really in the mood. We changed it up and unfortunately that means my husband won't be part of this unit, but we are doing it in the mornings at our dining room table, either over breakfast or right after breakfast and we're just doing it that way. I did film doing the first lesson today and I'll insert that clip at the end 
That is the one thing that we have changed drastically that I think is going to help us get these units complete is putting them in the morning. Something else that I have changed is I printed out the teacher's guide, which usually I use this digitally on either my computer or my iPad. But again, I was just finding that wasn't working for us. I don't know why. It seems like so much more reading on the computer or the iPad, even though it's the same amount of pages. I'm weird. Y'all can totally tell me I'm weird. But yeah, so instead of doing it digitally, I did print out my teacher guide and the student guide. And now both of these are sitting on the dining room table. So after I clean up from dinner every night, what I'm doing is literally just laying this in a stack like this, along with a Bible at my seat at the kitchen table. And it's there when we wake up in the morning. We just, it's just right there. We're sitting at the table anyway, so it's easier to just grab it and open it. What we had been doing was storing units in my office in here, and that's where I find we didn't gravitate to grab them. If they had been sitting in my face and I couldn't avoid them, I think I would be more likely to grab them. So that is what we are doing with this one. I have not even looked at like the projects or anything in here yet. I literally printed this out last night. Um, but it seems like a lot of coloring and games and stuff. So, but yeah, that is how we are using this. We are just going really slowly through it. We are doing the five day, four day a week. Yeah, four day a week lesson plan that they have in the beginning, which should have started yesterday, but we started, we just did double today. Yeah, because there are 12 units. And in the future, I think that'll be what I continue to do is either the four day a week or three days a week. We were trying to just do it on weekends. That's what we did with the Thanksgiving one. And that is what did not work for us. We were like, oh, we'll only do it on weekends when my husband is home. So we can just take, you know, Saturday afternoon and do a unit and be cool with it. Totally didn't work for us. <laughs> because the second we left the house to go do something, we, did, we didn't want to do this unit. We didn't get home and do it. So that totally did not work for us. So I think it's gonna be a Monday, Wednesday, Friday thing in our homeschool when we do them from now on instead of like a weekend thing or an evening thing. I'm just flipping through this. There's a lot of coloring pages. I really like that. But yeah, that's basically how I use this with a toddler. And I don't feel like it's any different than how you would use it with other kids. I don't know, a lot of people have been like, there's no way she understands you. There's no way she gets it. And I agree with that. But I will also say that I was taught things that she's not gonna understand that, she's not gonna get it, she's not gonna, under, she's not gonna remember it. And years later when I learned that same thing again, I did remember aspects of it. So while she's not going to understand, our first lesson today was about the temperature in Israel when Jesus was born. If it had been actually December in Israel when Jesus was born, they're saying it would have been like 50, high 40s, whatever. That was the lesson today. Do you really think these shepherds were sleeping outside in the winter or do you think it's more likely it was in the summer? Um, I'll say she's not gonna be able to really have that thorough conversation, but we were able to go outside and say it is 60 outside here. I'm in North Florida, we're weird. And talk about like, would you sleep out here? If it was 10 degrees colder, would you sleep out here? And while maybe it doesn't exactly get the point of the unit, maybe it's not, but it does. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice, if I sound like this, I don't know. It's been three weeks of just, I feel like my chest is hollow. But yeah, so while maybe she's not getting the actual like, well, this is about was Jesus born on Christmas or was Jesus born in the summer? And that like that's debated or, whatever um she's getting the concept of well learning about the temperature learning about cold or hot and would you sleep out here what would you do to make yourself warmer and i did like that so yeah that's kind of just how we do it we don't ingrain facts we're not trying to make her memorize facts if we get to the questions at the end of the lesson and she doesn't know them honestly she never knows them to be completely honest i end up feeding her the answers and she repeats them and that's fine. Sometimes if it's a question about Jesus, she'll say yes or no, she knows the answer to those. But I think getting this type of, this story, getting the Jesus' birth story into her at this age is never too young at all. Yeah, I don't think she's too young for this. 
One thing I do really appreciate about these, so as I said, this is the Campfire Curriculum's Christmas. In the teacher's guide, there are parts that are a bit graphic. Um, for instance, in the introduction, there is a wolf attack on a bunch of sheep. And obviously that gets a bit graphic. You know, the sheeps get bit, the shepherd gets bit, et cetera, et cetera. It was printed in blue font instead of black so that I knew not to read that to my daughter. So that is one thing that I do appreciate is anything sensitive or, I mean, gory is printed differently so that you don't inadvertently read something too advanced or graphic to your child. So that is how we are using this mini unit. I will insert the clip of us doing the first lesson just so you can see how we did it. Um, it was really a brief one today. It was not much reading, which is another one I think I like about this. It's maybe a page or two of reading versus like, some of them have a lot of reading. Some of them had five, six pages, some of the other mini units I looked at. So I like like one to two is good for us. All right, I'm just gonna show you a little bit of me putting this unit together here so I can talk a little more. But today we're just gonna go through a very first lesson and show you how we did it. I'm not gonna actually let you listen to me read the lesson cause copyright, I don't wanna infringe on that. But I will talk about what we are doing as we go through this section of the unit. All right, so we are getting ready to do our Christmas unit. I brought in the book we are currently reading, which is A Little House Christmas. Mommy. Mommy. Yeah, baby? What? Please give me this. Okay, we'll go get you dressed and we'll do our unit. Um, and then we're just gonna go through the pre-reader book and the adult reader. I'm just gonna prop you all on the tripod and let you watch how we do this. So let's start some music and I'll show you us doing our unit. Hello, guys. <laughs> Are you my little YouTuber? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I am. That we love. And then while we're gonna go inside and drink our chocolate by the fire. Cause all I want is to spend this day with you. So, as I said in the beginning, we are doing two days in one. So I did the introductory unit and lesson one. So this took me a little longer than it would have if we had just done lesson one. Um, and I let her do the activities for lesson one through the entire thing. So the introductory unit for this one was a bit more reading than I'm used to, but it was the story of the shepherds being told Jesus was born. So I liked how they put that into perspective for children and that it was kind of a relatable story of being about these kids. And yeah, that's where we're at right now is I'm just reading that whole introductory paragraph. And then you're gonna see we're gonna head outside soon. Once we got into unit one, it was all about the temperature in Israel. So we're going outside to see what the temperature feels like to see if we would sleep outside there like the shepherds were doing in Israel. So in the lesson, they actually said to make your own thermometer. That was what was in my advanced reader's guide. We did not do that. I just thought it was too much for her and we just didn't do it. So if you have older kids, you could make a thermometer at this point. Or if you have younger kids, just go outside and feel the weather like we did. I don't need any presents as long as I spend this day with you. It's a beautiful kissing on a mistletoe's baby with you. So now back at the table, we're just gonna go over what we felt outside, if we would sleep out there, and then we're gonna wrap up the unit and just do the final questions and go over our answers. I do feed her the answers as I said earlier. So yeah, do what your kids can do. I modified this for my child and you can just modify it for all different age ranges. There's only nothing I read today that I felt like she would be unable to understand or unable to enjoy. All right guys, and that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed, I don't even know what to call this, how we use Christmas mini units in our house, how we use mini units with a toddler. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did, and comment down below. Let me know, do you do these kind of units in your house? Do you do them with younger children, older children? 
what's your thoughts on them. If you are new, please make sure you hit the subscribe button down below. I have new content every Tuesday and Thursday, and I would love to see you in some of my videos. But I will see y'all in the next one on Tuesday. Bye, guys. I need any presents as long as I spend this day with